So what are the best whiskey gifts for Christmas? Well I'm Phil and I'm going to fill you in about my top 5 picks for the festive season. So buying a whiskey gift can be pretty confusing, especially if you're buying for someone who already likes whiskey and maybe you don't really like whiskey and you go to the whiskey shop and there's all these bottles and you just don't know what's going on and there's just so many whiskeys and they're all everywhere. So that's why I made this video for you help you in your Christmas shopping. When buying your whiskey gift for your whiskey loving friend or family or whoever it is, maybe it's just for yourself. It could work for yourself, that could be good too. So basically I would pick kind of a broad spectrum of whiskeys so that it will match people wherever they are on their whiskey journey, whether they're just getting into it or maybe they've been into it for 50 years and they've got hundreds of bottles. So you'll be able to pick one of these whiskeys from this list and it should match appropriately but also where you are on your whiskey budget. There's some cheaper ones, there's some more expensive ones. So let's jump into the first one, the best whiskey for beginners. So the whiskey for beginners, and when I was selecting this category, there's a few other options I could have gone for, you know, your kind of your classics like the Abelor 12, the Glenmorangie 10, but I was kind of wanting a whiskey that's a little bit more complex than that but also works really well for someone who hasn't drunk a lot of whiskies before. Maybe they don't really have a big collection, maybe they just have one other whiskey. So it's a safe whiskey, and most people I've given this whiskey to have liked it. Most people who don't normally drink whiskey. And the whiskey that I've chosen is a Downey 15. And what I like about this whiskey, look most of those other starter whiskies will be bottled at 40%, this one is bottled at 43, so it's got a little bit more complexity, but not enough to scare off people who are not used to drinking whiskey. And the other thing I really like about this whiskey is that it's a Highland whiskey. But, and I think I got this wrong in my uh, History of Scotch video, I said it was a Speyside whiskey, but actually, I think it is a Highland whiskey, someone corrected me on that. So, there you go, correction. There used to be annotations on YouTube where you'll go, oh, I got that wrong, that's not exactly right, and you can't do that anymore, so, yeah. But not only is it a Highland whiskey, it's, well it says on the bottle that it's the highest distillery in Scotland and it's in the mountains. So why does that matter? Well if you remember my Indian whiskey explained video that I talked about in hotter climates whiskey ages faster, but it's not exactly the same as time in the cask in a colder climate. Um, it can often still come off a bit hot, there still can be some notes that make it quite spirity. This one's kind of the other end of the spectrum. Firstly, it's aged 15 years, but also it's in that cold climate. So the age just happened very slowly. So this is gonna be a very mellow whiskey, a very super well-rounded whiskey. It says in the bottle that it's the gentle spirit. It is the gentle spirit. It's the whiskey I can give to basically anyone that doesn't even really drink whiskey, or maybe they've just had some whiskeys, and it's gonna be a great gift. My backup, um, because I know with distribution and everything these days it's pretty hard and different markets can be wildly different in price. So I've included a backup one and my backup is Red Breast 12. Uh, this is also a really easy drinker, it tastes like shortbread, it's sort of on theme, the Christmas theme. And it's going to be a great whiskey for a lot of the same reasons as the Dow 15. So I think both of these work well as great budget whiskies for beginners, for people who don't drink a lot of whiskey. And so the next category, affordable whiskies for the whiskey enthusiast. So I think when people normally buy a Christmas gift whiskey for someone they think likes whiskey, they often will go for some of the cliches like Macallan 12, Yablor 12, or maybe some sort of Johnny Walker. But before you do that, before you buy those whiskies, just check if your shop stocks this whiskey, the Glen Turret 12. I think this is a super underrated distillery. And we're in my markets, I can get this way cheaper than a Macallan 12, and I'd argue it's also way better, especially for a whiskey enthusiast. It's bottled at 46%, it's punched up, it's uh, unchill filtered, I don't know if it's natural colour, but also it's on theme, it's on the Christmas theme. You've got the Christmas cake, the red currant, the leather, you've got some really nice ar aromatic notes, and it just tastes great around the festive season. It's a very beautiful bottle, and when you finish the whiskey, they've then got a really nice decanter they can use. But I do know, 
this one is a little bit kind of under the radar, so maybe your whiskey shop don't stock it. So I've done a backup, and my backup for this whiskey is the Bunnerhaven 12. If you've got someone in your life who you know loves whiskey, they're gonna love this one. They, this is an absolute classic. It did really well on the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards. Pretty much everyone I know who's into whiskey likes this one. It's from the Isla Isla, but it's unpeated. It's also got that same sherry note, those Christmas cake notes, those dried fruit notes from those sherry casks. So I think it works well too. But the reason I prefer the Glen Turret is that it's an interesting, slightly different whiskey than what they probably normally drink. So last year when I did my kind of Christmas gift whiskey video, my top pick was the Lagavulin 16. And the reason I chose that is because it's very on theme. It's kind of that smoky notes by the fire, but it also has those nice spiced and Christmas cake notes, and it blends them really well together. Well this year I wanted to keep on that theme. And so the second whiskey I picked for the whiskey enthusiast is the Kilhoman Sinead. So this is a fantastic whiskey, it's also an Isla whiskey, so you know it's going to be a smoky whiskey. And they've done really well again at blending both those sherry fruity notes with those smoke notes. But this one is bottled at 46%, it's got even slightly more punch in terms of the spirit than the Lagavulin 16. Look it's not the same age, but I think this whiskey is still going to work really well for the whiskey enthusiast. It's natural colour, it's unchill filtered, and I recently had this whiskey at a whiskey tasting I hosted, and everyone there agreed that this was a fantastic whiskey and an underrated whiskey. Because I think when most people are thinking about buying an Isla or a smoky whiskey, they pick one of the big three, Ardbeg, Laphroaig, Lagavulin. So that's why I think this one actually works quite well for a gift. It's slightly under the radar, it's slightly different, and the bottle looks great. I think it makes a great gift. However, if you wanted to level this whiskey up a little bit and you had a slightly bigger budget, I'd highly recommend going for another Kilhoman, the Kilhoman Loch Gorm. This is like kind of like the Sinead, but it's leveled up. It's a nine year old, it's even richer. It's got more barbecue, brisket notes, chocolatey notes and a lot of those really nice dark dried fruit notes. So depending on your budget, one of these will work really well for the smoky and sherry crossover. And now onto my left field pick. So as some of you might have picked out, this is not actually a whiskey. Well that's why it's my left field pick, as it still works really well as a gift for the whiskey lover. And there's a reason for that. See, I think most whiskey drinkers assume that rum's kind of really sweet and syrupy, and it kind of makes sense because rum is from sort of distilled sugarcane and whiskey is from barley, so it makes sense that rum's gonna be a little bit more sweet. However, this rum is quite a dry rum, and it's a very surprising rum for people who I know really love whiskey, and I've given them a little bit of this rum, and have actually really enjoyed it, and almost acts as kind of a gateway rum to the world of rums for the whiskey lover. It hasn't had all these weird spices or extra ingredients added to the rum like some other rums do. It's a really great sipping rum. So what is it? It's the Dawley's 12 year old, which is a Barbados rum. And I think it just works really well. See, I think some of you will be wanting to buy something that's a little bit unique, a little bit left field. And maybe the person you're buying for already has a lot of whiskeys. So this will work really well as kind of a surprise gift and something that is just a little bit different. That's why I picked it. So now onto the fourth category, and that is the luxury whiskey. So the whiskey I've chosen is the Glenmorangie Signet, and this is an absolutely amazing gift whiskey. So some of you know Glenmorangie, you've probably tried the Glenmorangie 10, which is in most bars and bottle shops around the world, but this one is a more premium release. And just look at this box, I mean, if you want a nice gift whiskey, just, it's just beautiful, it comes in this beautiful magnetized box. And then the bottle is just great, the theatre to this. It's got this really heavy, like, glass cork. I really love the gradient, the sort of the dark glass to the lighter glass. Look, it doesn't have an age statement, and normally I wouldn't really pick whiskies in the luxury category for not having an age statement, but I think there's an exception to this one, because every year what Glenmorangie do is they shut down kind of all the processes and stuff going on at the distillery, 
and rather than just using normal malted barley, they use malted kind of chocolate barley, which you might know this if you drink lots of craft beer. If you've ever had a chocolate beer uh, where it's not actually chocolate, but they basically roast the barley in the same way people can roast coffee. And so this whiskey, when I drink it, it's like having coffee beans dipped in dark chocolate. It's a really interesting whiskey. You know, because whiskey can go in a few different directions. It can go in the smoky direction. It can go in the sort of fruity sherry direction. It can go in sort of the lighter kind of white fruit direction. But I haven't quite had a whiskey like this that goes in that really strong chocolatey coffee direction. I think first of all, buy it for someone who likes coffee already, because then their palate's going to already like it. I think for people who don't like coffee, might not like it. It looks expensive, but it also tastes expensive. I really like this whiskey, and I know a lot of people who love whiskey, who have drunk a lot of whiskey, love it too. So I hope you all have a great festive Christmas period, and I hope one of these whiskeys will work well for the person you're buying whiskey for. But above all, make sure you share and enjoy. Beauty.